countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, presents... X minus one... Tonight's story, Requiem by Robert Heinlein. On a high hill in Samoa, there is a grave. Inscribed on the marker are these words. Under the wide and starry sky, dig my grave and let me lie. Gladly did I live and gladly die, and I lay me down with a will. This be the verse you grave for me. Here he lies where he longed to be. Home is the sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter, home from the hill. These lines appear another place, scrawled on a shipping tag from a compressed air container and pinned to the ground with a knife. It wasn't much of a fair as fairs go. The trotting races wouldn't be held till 8 o'clock at night. The flags and bunting drooped in the gray afternoon, and the pitchmen seemed discouraged. A large black limousine stood at the side of the road, 32 cylinders purring quietly. And over the dust and the clatter of the fair, a bullhorn blasted the highest pitch. Hurry, 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 this way to the moon rocket, the moon rocket. See it fly, the actual type rocket used by the first man to see it fly. Chills, thrills, the romance of space. You can ride in it for only $25. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hey, Charlie, have you got that feed too patched? I welded it. Good for maybe an hour. Oh, what a crowd. They wouldn't risk a nickel to see the sun blow up. Oh, Captain, uh, excuse me, Captain. Yeah? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Fifty uh, cents to inspect the rocket. One. Could you take a passenger this trip? You mean you want to go up? Twenty-five bucks. That's right. Yes, sir, right away. Uh, Charlie, take the pitch. Step this way, sir. Look out for the feed lines. Oh, yes, I see them. Hey, Doc. Passenger for a checkup. Okay, Mac. Well, uh, is this necessary? Regulations. Uh, take off your coat, uh, open your shirt, roll up your right sleeve. All right. Well, how are things, Mac? Slow. We're not drawing as much as the cooch tent. Eh, it'll pick up tonight with the trotters. I'm ready, Doctor. All right, give me your arm. Mm. All right, breathe in. Breathe. Breathe. Uh uh-uh. uh. Sorry, Mac. No go, Doc. Cardiac condition. I couldn't certify. I'm sorry. You mean you won't take me up? He's the doctor. Well, I rather expected it. Sorry. Between you and me, we could have used the 25. Uh, Excuse me, Captain. Yeah? Could you and your engineer have dinner with me after your flight? Dinner? At my home. My car's over there. That's your car? The limousine? That's right. You serious, Mac? You want Charlie and me for dinner? Of course. Okay. Okay. Don't see why not? Thanks. Charlie, you had enough. Lay off, Mac. Oh, that's perfectly all right, Captain McIntyre. Uh, cigar? Thanks. Light? Mm. Yeah, thanks. Yes, it's... Uh... Hard for me to see why any holder of a master's ticket would quit the Earth Moon Run. Yeah, I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, don't hand us that. It was Rule G washed you. All out. right, all right, so I took a few drinks. 
Uh, tell me, uh, gentlemen, uh, are you satisfied with what you're doing now? Are you kidding? We've been pushing the old junk heap for a year. Half the time, the sheriff has an attachment on the ship for a fuel bill. It stinks. Would it help you to get back to the moon? Well, sure. I could get a short haul job hopping over. I kept my nose clean, I might even get back on the run. Would you be open to a business proposition? Hmm? What is it? You own your own rocket? Buying a couple of liens against it. Mm, I want to charter her. To take me to the moon. You hear what he said, Mac? He wants us to fly that old heap to the moon. <laughs> he can't do it. The old boat's worn out. Why don't you charter a regular company ship? Oh, no, no, I can't do that. Uh, the company charter comes up before a congressional committee this year. Uh, they have to follow the regular... Uh, you system. can't pass the physical. Now, if you can afford to hire us, why don't you bribe a couple of company medics? It's been done before. No, uh, I know. <laughs> but not for me. I'm D. D. Harriman. Harriman? Mm. You own the company. Hey, what are you giving us? I own a large percentage of the company, but the other directors won't permit me to jeopardize the franchise. Can you tie that, Mac? A guy with half the money in the world, and he's up a creek. <laughs> Shut up, Charlie. Why do you want to go to the moon so bad, Mr. Harriman? Well, it's the one thing I've really wanted to do all my life. I'm maybe 50 years older than you. When I was a kid, nobody believed that we'd really reached the moon. You've seen rockets all your lives. When I was a boy, they laughed at the idea, but I believed. I wanted the moon then. I used to stand in the backyard and stare at him. How far away is it, Mom? The moon? Far enough. Why don't people fly to the moon? They can't. Why not? They just can't. But not now, anyway. Someday I will. What? Fly to the moon. <laughs> sure, sure. Now, come on, Del. Inside. Way past your bedtime. There wasn't enough money for college, so I worked. Stock boy at the old Ford plant in Detroit. Accountant, credit manager for a mail-order house. Then New York and Wall Street. And then transportation. The monorail line between New York and Chicago. The Atlantic Pressure Tunnel. And then... Harriman Rockets. Dell? Dell, I want to talk to you. I'm working, Charlotte. You talk to me now, Dell, or you may not get another chance. What is it? Fred Lott was in. You've sold out again. I run the business, Charlotte. Dell, I'm fed up with it. Up to here. I married you because I love you. I still love you, but I'm fed up. Now, what is it, Charlotte? We are not young anymore. Fred tells me you've bought into a bankrupt engineering firm. Sunk every nickel in it. Well, they own the Schwartz Miller fuel injector patents. I need them. How many times do we have to start over? I'm tired. I'm not asking for millions. Just a little life for the two of us. I didn't know about the divorce for a month. I lost the papers under a stack of blueprints and stock prospectus. That night I walked through the park watching the full moon move across the sky. My old friend. I could recognize the wrinkles. Chrysium, Mare Fecundatus, Mare Twinculatus, the Luna Apennines. It took two fraudulent bankruptcies and an investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission before we did it. The moon. There were three injunctions on the rocket before it blasted off. I was going on the second trip, but my considerate board served a court order on me. You can't go there. Fred, I'll break you if it's the last thing I Del, do. Well, you've got a bad heart. That's no secret. Oh. If you die out there, the whole card house comes down. Now, we've got an equity in this corporation. We're going to see it protected. You've sucked us in on this wild scheme, and now that it paid off, you're going to sit right down here on Earth and see that the dividends come out on time. You're not going to the moon, Dell. Forget it. 
I never went. By the time my lawyers shook off the restraining orders, the first cargo rocket had crashed in the Pacific and Congress rushed through the Space Precautionary Act. My heart kept earthbound, and now I'm old. I've lived longer than I should, but I would not let myself die. I will not until I have set foot on the moon. There, Captain McIntyre, you asked why I wanted to go to the moon, hmm? Well? You find a ship, Mr. Harriman, and I'll drive her. You'll hit the moon. All right. Then we can get down to business. I'll have contracts drawn up for you. Uh, you two will have to buy me a ship. I can't do it openly, of course. My dear board of directors would find out and slap a court order on me. Well, we can't get credit. Oh, don't worry. I'll supply the cash in advance. Pick some ship that can be fitted for the jump. A strato yacht. Hmm? Apply for a strato license. Then after it's issued, you move to a piece of, of, of desert. I'll find a strip and buy it. Hmm? You mean fit her out there? Yes, yes. We'll install extra fuel tanks, change the injectors and timers for space flight. Hmm? Charlie, you think you can manage the changeover without a dockyard and shops? Well, I'll have to have a load of power tools and a lot of time. It'll be haywired and spot welded. Just so it doesn't blow up when I slap the key. It won't blow. Well, that's what you said about the last ship. Now, huh? cut it out, will you? I ask you, Mr. Herman, that last ship was a junk heap and we knew it. Now, this one, this will be different. We're going to spend some dough and do it right. Ain't we, Mr. Herman? You spend all the money you want. I'll see that you get it. A hundred and thirty-two shares of Apex holding at 60% of power. Check. Uh, Fifty-two preferred of Spaceways fuel, 50% of power. Check. Uh, that's the list. Oh, Mr. Herman... Uh, there's a process server outside. Yeah? What is it? Mm, I don't know, sir, but I think it's a subpoena. Oh, I was expecting that. Ashley, get Mr. Caymans on the phone. I think it's time for my lawyer. May it please, Your Honor, counsel representing Mr. Harriman's relatives contend that his behavior for the past few weeks gives clear indication that a mind brilliant in the world of finance has become senile. They petition you to declare him incompetent and to assign a conservator to protect his financial interests and those of his heirs. May I suggest that in the last few words my opponent gave away his entire thesis? It is evident that the petitioners believe that my client should conduct his affairs in such a way as to ensure that his nephews, nieces, and their issue will be supported in unearned luxury for the rest of their lives. Therefore, we pray this court will confirm my client in his right to do what he likes with his own. Deny this petition and send these meddlers about their business. <laughs> Well, uh, Caymans, hmm? It could go either way. He might rule against me? He might. We'll know tomorrow. Here it is. Eccentric millionaire disappears. Yes. You're eccentric, Mr. Harriman. Well, they used to call me crazy, but that depends on your credit rating. A bench warrant under contempt proceedings has been issued. They won't find me out here. <laughs> How is the work going, Charlie? Hmm? My hand's in pretty good shape. Well, are you ready to go? My nephews will have detectives out looking for me. Well, I could run those calibration tests tonight. Okay. Take to midnight. After that, it's up to the Commodore here. There. There she is, Mr. Harriman. That's the job that'll take you to the moon. It's a good ship. Isn't it? Uh, uh, hey, Mac, uh, stop the car. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Oh. He's out? Look at him. What is matter? Uh, vest pocket. Here, break the glass. Hold it on his nose. He looks lousy. Yeah. yeah. There. He's breathing easy. Come around soon. Mac... 
We ain't going through with this. Why not? It's murder. He'll never stand up under the initial acceleration. Maybe not, but that's what he wants to do. You heard him. I don't like it. He's an okay old buzzard. What do you want to do with him? Send him back to Kansas City so his no-good nephews can shut him up in the cellar? No, but... Okay, then. Now get out there and make your set up for those test runs. Get that ship ready to fly. <laughs> Hey, hey you, you. Me? How many other people are there out in this desert? What can I do for you? You James McIntyre? Hey, Mac. What's the matter, Charlie? You McIntyre? Oh. Yeah. I'm the deputy federal marshal in this district. I got a warrant for your arrest. What charge? Conspiracy to violate the Space Precautionary Act. I suppose you're Charles Schwartz. I got one for you, too. Thanks. And a man named Harriman. Got a court order to put seals on your spaceship. We haven't got any spaceship. What's that, a kitty car? Strato yacht. Yeah? Well, I'll put seals in until a spaceship shows up. Where's Harriman? In the shed. What shed? <laughs> oh, my knuckle. That's the one I broke playing football. I'm always hurting that finger. We gotta hurry. Get Papa to the cabin and strap him into his hammock. Right. So long, deputy. Oh, my knuckle. <laughs> He's warm, Charlie. Everything set back there? How do I know? I didn't have time to run tests. Tough. You all right, Mr. Harriman? Mm, I think so, but these straps are tight. Have to be when we blast off. All set, Charlie. Give me control. Check. Test keys. One bank. Check. Two bank. There's an auxiliary up. We don't need it. All right, boy, hang on. Let's go. How are you, Pop? I'm doing fine. Couldn't be better. You better stay in your hammock. I'll loosen the straps a little. Oh. What is it? Nothing. Just go easy on that side. You ain't fooling me none, Pop. We got a couple of busted ribs. There isn't much I can do till we till we ground. You take a Neo Baritol and I'll wake you when we cut jets. No, no. No, I, I, I'll stay awake. Okay, just as you say, Pop. It's automatic, Charlie. How are the tubes holding up? Fine, tight as a drum. She handles nice. How's Pop? Alive, but he's in bad shape. How bad? Cracked a couple of ribs in the takeoff. I don't know what else. You think he'll last the trip? His heart was pounding like an off-time valve. Well, he'll last. He's tough. Tough? He's delicate as a canary. I don't mean that. He's tough down inside where it counts. Just the same, you better set her down awful easy if you want him alive. I'll make a full swing around the moon and ease her in in an involute approach curve. It'll go fine if we got enough fuel. Uh, somebody call me? Nothing wrong, Pop? Uh, oh, I thought somebody was calling me. Must have been asleep. I swung your hammock around. We're breaking now. There she is ahead. The moon. Seen a thousand photographs. There. That's Copernicus. Tycho. You know it all right, Pop. Where are you landing? Mari Embrium between Aristillus and Archimedes. Oh, that's about 40 miles from Lunar City, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it won't be easy landing without ground approach radar, will it? I've done it before. Not without a second pilot to punch the satimeter. <laughs> you ought to have a maid's ticket, Pop. You know the whole routine. You must have really studied up. Yes, that's all I could do, study, until now. Oh, look at uh, the moon. Mm. I feel as if I'm coming home. Yeah. Charlie. Yo. I'm taking her in. Cut in full power. Make it good, Mac. Pop can't take a rough one. Shut up and give me the power. I'll do my best. Okay. That'll meet a setting punch. Hang on, here we go. That was a lousy landing, Mac. That a meter drift. How's our passenger? Quiet. Now look, I wouldn't make any bets. That landing stunk. Will you shut up, I did my best. Hey, Pop. He's alive. 
There's blood in his mouth. He's trying to say something. Take it easy, Pop. We're down. Oh, where? Take it easy. Vacuum suits. Where are they? Steady, Pop. You can't go out there yet. We've got to oh, give you some first aid. G- give me that suit. What do you think, Mac? Uh, Might as well. Get the suit out of the locker. Uh, yeah, well, here's the big one. Be more comfortable. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. Pop. Easy now. All right. All right. Pull it up. Oh. Oh. Seal these zippers, Charlie. Uh, take it easy. All right. Now, the helmet. Air diaphragm set. Check. Air valve. Uh, set. Lift it on him. Don't hit him. Uh. All right. Come on, Charlie. Get into your suit and we'll carry him out the back. Easy. Easy with him. Okay. Okay. You all right, Pop? Outside. Take me outside. His left leg is gone. Get your shoulder under right. it. Right. Open the lock. All right, Pop. Come on. We're going out on the moon. The moon. All right. I'm going to leave you out here to look around while we get ready for the hike to town. You all right? The moon. We have to break out air bottles and rig a stretcher. It's 40 miles into the dome. Charlie, prop something behind his head. Okay. You comfortable, Pop? We'll be back soon. Moon. I can feel the pumice dust. And it doesn't hurt anymore. But there's the earth overhead. The earth and the sky and green blue. I'm on the moon. I'm on the moon. Dell. Dell. Charlotte? <laughs> I thought I heard somebody call my name. Yeah, I'm getting old. My mind wanders. Dell. Dell. Charlotte. Dell. That is you, isn't it? I made it, Charlotte. I'm on the moon. You didn't understand. You were afraid I wouldn't take care of myself. But I made it. I'm on the moon. I'm on the moon. Come on, Charlie. We better get Pop going. Here, give me a hand getting him on the stretcher. Never mind the stretcher, Mac. What's the matter? He won't need it. He's dead. Oh. Better get out the pumice skis and the air bottles. It's a long walk to town. Yeah. What about him? Looks as if he's resting, doesn't he? Propped up looking out on the pumice. Well, he hit the moon. Come on. Let's start walking. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Requiem, written by Robert Heinlein and adapted for radio by Ernest Kenoy. Featured in the cast were Joe DeSantis, John McGovern, Rita Lloyd, Jim Bowles, Stan Early, David Pfeffer, and Jack Orison. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production.